Hey, my friends, it's Wednesday night. That means it's hump day. We're halfway through the week, and I hope that you're having a fantastic week. Hope you're walking in the blessings of the Lord and not allowing all of this stuff going on in our world today, all the chatter, all the stuff to rob you of the blessings of God. Tonight, we're going to jump back in the book of Philippians. In fact, we're uh, almost finished with this book. We're kind of wrapping things up. I want to encourage you to share tonight, whatever platform you're watching on, make sure you hit the share button and let's include as many people as we can, giving them an opportunity to plug in to this great teaching, okay? Uh, in chapter 4, where we were last week, Paul talks about contentment. In chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, he said that he's learned to be content in whatever circumstances he finds himself in. And we have, uh, we've talked about throughout this book that uh, Paul emphasizes uh, joy. He emphasizes the ability to rejoice. And now in chapter 4, the ability to maintain contentment in spite of the negative, uh, difficult, uncomfortable circumstances of his life. In fact, throughout this book, he's talked about uh, drawing strength from friends, how the Philippian believers brought encouragement to him and helped him. Uh, he talked about praying more, which we emphasized last week. We talked about thinking differently, the importance of how we think can bring about joy and confidence and contentment in our life. Uh, Paul also talked about uh, his endeavor for personal growth, that he hasn't reached it yet, that he keeps pressing to the mark. And tonight I want to talk about three other little principles or life truths that I think Paul implemented into his life. So here we go. One of them is to view life through a spiritual lens. View life through a spiritual lens. Back in chapter 1, verse number 12, Paul said, I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I'm in chains because of Christ. Knows that I'm in chains because of Christ. Let me translate that. They know about Jesus Christ. They know about the gospel, his, his crucifixion, his resurrection, his ascension to heaven because I have been locked up here in this jail. Hey, life is full of ups and downs. We've talked about that throughout this study. You're gonna have good times, you're gonna have bad times, you're gonna have happy times, and we're gonna have sad times. In fact, James in chapter one, verse number two, says it this way. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, and our faith will be tested, when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. We have to understand that God uses every season in life. God uses uh, times of blessing and times of lack. We have to understand that, that walking by faith and living for the Lord is kind of like exercise. You know, when you exercise, sometimes exercise is hard. Sometimes exercise is uncomfortable. Sometimes working out an exercise is even painful, but it produces something good in our life. So Paul said, when you look at life, when you look at the circumstances of life, uh, you have to view it through a scriptural lens, a spiritual lens, uh, the lens of divine purpose. So God uses everything, even trials, even adversity, to bring about his purpose in our life. And his purpose in our life is to represent Christ, is to reflect Jesus Christ, is to share Jesus Christ with the world. So when God blesses us, it's an opportunity to fulfill his purpose. When we go through seasons of lack, it's an opportunity to fulfill his purpose. Uh, when God heals us, it's an opportunity to fulfill his purpose. Before we get healed, when we're even ill or not feeling well, it's an opportunity to share our faith and fulfill His purpose. What is His purpose? For us to share Jesus Christ with the world. So if we can learn, as Paul did, to view our life circumstances, good and bad, through a spiritual lens, a scriptural lens, a heavenly lens, we're gonna have a lot more joy and a lot more contentment. Here's another principle. 
find significance in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And we talked about this earlier, I wanna emphasize it again. Find significance in our relationship with Jesus Christ. In chapter three, verse number seven, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it as garbage so that I could gain Christ. Paul talks about, before verse number seven, talks about uh, the fact that he was uh, uh, a Jew, talks about the fact that uh, he was from a particular tribe, talks about the fact that he was educated. Here's what he's saying in essence. Every accomplishment in my life up to the point of knowing Jesus doesn't even compare to my personal relationship with Christ. In fact, he says, those experiences are like garbage or trash compared to the wonderful value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. So Paul made his relationship with Jesus the number one asset in his life. I think the question all of us have to ask ourselves is this, is Jesus number one in our life? Is Jesus Lord of our life? Is Jesus the first love of our life? Because if he's not, it's gonna be very difficult for us to find contentment and joy and be able to rejoice when all of these things are going wrong in our life. When we find ourselves being challenged or going through trials, you're not gonna have a, a spiritual lens or a, a spiritual perspective on life and the spiritual purpose or calling if Jesus is not number one in your life. Again, uh, James says it this way in chapter one, verse number eight, their loyalty is divided between God and the world and they are unstable in everything they do. James is talking about Christians who are un, unstable. Uh, they have a divided loyalty. There is no place, listen to me, there's no place for a genuine, legitimate follower of Jesus to have a divided loyalty. Jesus needs to be the love of our life. He needs to be the Lord of our life. And we need to put him number one in our life. And if we don't, we're divided. We're wishy-washy. We're a double-minded man and we're unstable in all of our ways. So Paul was able to maintain contentment and joy and the ability to rejoice whether he had money or he didn't have money, whether he had popularity or he was being criticized all the time, whether he was free or whether he was incarcerated in Rome because his joy and his contentment came from his personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's the third principle that Paul discovered. Learn to live a selfless life, a selfless life. And he talked about that back in chapter number two. In verse number three, he said, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your interest, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Paul was able to find contentment, joy, peace, strength, no matter what was going on in his life, times of blessing, times of lack, times of ease, times of difficulty, because he learned to live a selfless life. If Jesus is number one in our life, if Jesus is the Lord of our life, if God's purpose is the top priority of our life, it will be much easier for us to live a selfless life. I've discovered, and I'm sure you have too, that when people are discontent, when people lack joy, when people lack peace in their life, and they're full of anxiety, they're usually people that are all wrapped up in themselves. They're people that really don't care that much about other people. Oh, they say they do, but they don't do anything to help people. They can't get out of their own way to be a blessing or an encouragement to another person. And so many problems and frustrations in our life are a result of selfishness, selfishness. When I become selfish, I. I I feel like, you know, I'm not as content. I, I'm not as joyful. 
as I am when I'm, I'm in a giving mood, when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm like Jesus and I want to bless other people and I can get out of my own way and become a blessing to others. Pastor Tommy Barnett, who uh, built the great first assembly in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Pastor Tommy told a story about when he was pastoring. And uh, in this story, he said there was a lady that contacted the church and she wanted counseling. She said, Pastor, I have to be able to come in and talk to you. I need counseling. My life's just so messed up. And uh, Pastor Barnett said to her, well, ma'am, I'm extremely busy for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to have to wait and you can call back and make an appointment then. Well, she said, what am I supposed to do? He said, well, go, go bake cookies and then start giving cookies out to people. Just bake cookies and start blessing other people with cookies. She said, okay. So a couple of weeks later, he saw her at church and he said to her, uh, you haven't called back. How come you didn't call to set up a counseling appointment? It's been a couple of weeks. And she said, well, pastor, I don't need it now. He said, why not? She said, once I started baking cookies and started helping other people and blessing other people, I forgot about my problems. Isn't that the way it works? When we are willing to live a selfless life, when we're willing to, to be like Jesus and, and go out of our way to bless other people, we end up finding tremendous contentment and joy in our life. Uh, you know, I think about our dream team here at New Life. I think about the food pantry uh, workers that come every Tuesday and every Thursday and, and they're down here, they don't get paid, they're down here just volunteering their time, selfless time to bless other people in our community with food. I think about, you know, our team that goes to nursing homes and ministers and, and encourages people in nursing homes. I, I think about, you know, uh, the back to school day that we have every summer where we give away book bags and all the different things we do for people in the community. The, the Little League uh, event when the first day of Little League starts and our church people go out on a Saturday, a precious Saturday, and they give their time to be a blessing to the kids in our community and the families in our community. Why do they do that? Because they've discovered that when they live a selfless life, they have more contentment, more joy, and more rejoicing in their life. So my friend, that's the challenge that all of us have. Let's start today. Let's start the remainder of this week. Let's begin to implement these principles that Paul implemented in his life. And I promise you, Contentment will come, joy will come, and you'll be able to rejoice in every season. All right, have a great week. I'll see you next time.